My name is Lolly Mae McKinney Surratt. I attended SWIFT from 19, 19 and 48, 49. I only had one year at SWIFT. And can you tell us a little bit about how you came to SWIFT, that story? Yeah. Um, I, my original home is Chesney, South Carolina. And I say I cut my teeth on the word education because uh, my mother always said she, wants, she wanted her children to get an education. She came home one year from visiting my father in Johnson City, Tennessee, and she said next year when Jay forgets his boneless, uh, we're gonna move to Johnson City. Well, I could not understand what the connection was between a boneless and moving to Johnson City because I was only uh, seven years old. Well, we moved to Johnson City uh, in 1937, 6, 37, and uh, I attended uh, public schools in Johnson City, Douglas Elementary and Langston High School. And my mother was still saying, I want all my children to have an education. And of course, in the course of going to school, I found out that the connection between the boneless and moving to Johnson City, the word was really boneless. It was not boneless. <laughs> But I, I mean, I, when, when she came home and said, we're moving because of daddy's boneless, well, I, I was just really uh, in the dark. But anyway, that's how we came to Johnson City. And uh, there were seven of us who came to Johnson City. And eventually there were nine of us and seven lived. And, uh, and my brother Ernest, went to Langston and he, when uh, he met, uh, there were a lot of his professors that were interested in his going to school. And one of them was, a, I believe, a Robert Hale. And he said, well, you can go to Swift College. And uh, the fees were nominal. I mean, uh, at that time, it was only uh, just, uh, I, I don't even know how much it was a quarter. Well, it, wasn't, it was quarters. It wasn't semesters. But anyway, it was something that uh, we could afford. And he worked during the, all of his uh, high school years, and I did too. So he was able to come to, to SWIFT and he finished uh, SWIFT and went to a &I State where he graduated. And the year that he graduated, uh, the year before he graduated from a and was the year that I was finished in Langston. So I had to wait until he, fin he got through that year. And then he would send me but I, I'll admit I was still a Doubting Thomas. I just didn't see how we, you know, any way that I could go to school. But when he finished and uh, Ann and I came home that year and he said, well, I'm gonna send you to Morristown because the, the rules that strict are, uh, rules that swift are pretty strict and you've sort of been able to, um, you know, had a little more you've been allowed a little more freedom, so I'm gonna send you to Morristown. So for my freshman year of college, I went to Morristown College. And I was there and I was such a homebody. And I thought, well, if life is like this at Morristown, it can't be any worse at Swift. And it will certainly be a little cheaper and I will be able to be with my brother uh, that year. Uh, I wanted to be here where he was, but I didn't want to be in any of his classes because he was a very hard taskmaster. He was sort of like Miss Dessa. He, um, 
uh, not that I was going to play around any. And as she said, in those days, we didn't, well, going to college, if you came, it wasn't a, it was hardly an option as to whether you were going to do what you were supposed to do here. Because you'd either do it, you'd be punished, you'd be sent home, and the worst of it, in my case, was my grades would be sent to my mother. And that, I definitely did not want. Even with him here on the campus, I, I mean, I wasn't even, uh, I think I would have probably braved him here rather than my mother there. So that, that, wasn't, that wasn't an option. There was a lot of accountability and there was a lot of responsibility, especially with going to school. Um, we, it, uh, we, my, we were offered education and for those in my family who wanted to accept it and like run with it, well then that was a good idea. The others who didn't knew that there was not money that could be spent for somebody to come and just, you know, party uh, for a quarter or a year or something like that. That wasn't an option. Um, if we were coming to college, we were coming to college to study, and uh, that was it. My uh, boyfriend, who later became my husband, um, and of course I, I wouldn't have dared to let him in my room, not in those dormitory doors or anything like that. I, I, I heard those stories, but to me they were stories, and I, that's where I left them. But we, I lived in the, we were in the girls' dormitory, and I think we were up over the uh, dining hall is where I think we were. And of course, every day coming from his classroom, he had to pass by my window. So I always made it up to my, <laughs> my, my room to see him pass by my, my window. And I was telling one of the ladies that I met coming to and from the reunion about that. And she says, well, I, I did you one better. She said, I had a brick in my room. And every day when my husband or, well, he later boyfriend came by, she would let her brick down out of the window to give him a message. So I thought, I thought that was pretty unique. My duty was to pick up all the serving bowls off the table for each meal. I didn't have to wash them. I just had to had to uh, uh, collect them. One young man was the mailman. And um, I think the uh, year that, well, somebody was here, there was only two men, I don't, I don't know if this was my time or not, but all the young men, was, men were in service. And this, and there was only like two men in the high school and one in the college or something like that department, but it was because of, because of that. Because of the war. Yeah, because and of the so war. I, I, my, I think I, I was in high school then, and they had the high school department here as they had, this was junior college. They had 12, up to 12 grades up in high school. I don't know what the high school years were. I guess nine through twelve, and then they had freshmen and so freshmen and sophomore, and that was as far as we went because it was a junior college, and that's how come I happened to stay here. Like I was one year at Marshtown, it was a junior college, and one year at Swift, it was a it was a junior college. So I was here for the. We were fortunate to have a group of people. Um, Presbyterian or Christian or whomever who were interested in uh, black children get interested enough in black children to afford them a, an education. You know, it, uh, there were many colleges, but we couldn't afford to go. I mean, all, they were all priced out of our price range or income range or whatever. And uh, Swift and Morristown also 
uh, we could attend because you could do uh, some money and then you got a work scholarship or some way was, you know, made for you to be able to attend whatever your uh, financial circumstances were. And that's, that's the really uh, point I like about uh, SWIFT and even uh, I know Mr. Armstrong had lived in this neighborhood. I don't know if he worked in it or not. And he was our principal at Langston and he encouraged people to come to uh, SWIFT and uh, uh, you know get a at least a gen uh, junior college education. And um, the way I came, Mr. There was a Presbyterian minister. I told him I wanted to come to Swift, and he said, well, come and teach Bible school. And I did that in Johnston City and applied, and you know, that way I networked. We, that was the way not only me, but other students were, were able to come to Swift. And they had a really good, caring attitude, I mean, you know, about the, when we were here, we were almost like their children. I mean, they kept a close eye on us. They had a, a, the people who, uh, the principal and other educators in the area uh, would encourage us to come to SWIFT and, and you know, uh, tell us ways to apply and, uh, and those kinds of things. We had to get up pretty early because we had to get uh, all of this, you know, ladies and bathing and dressing and, uh, well, people in general maybe, and putting on all this makeup if that's what you did. Because we had to be at breakfast at, uh, I'm going to say 7 o'clock or 7.30, 7 o'clock. And there was no such thing as you coming in there, if breakfast was at 7, you were there at 7 and you had time to eat and uh, do whatever you had to do. And like I say, I picked up the bowls, so I had to have some extra time to pick up the bowls in case I had an um, eight o'clock class or whatever. And uh, so we, I would go to class and um, we had free periods in between our classes. I mean, you, cause you know, you just have to schedule them. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Tuesday, Thursday, you did this and that and the other. But anyway, and we had our whatever classes we had in the morning, and I think you could go back to your rooms if you had time in between, study or do, you know, whatever you wanted to do. You, you didn't really have what I call free time at SWIFT. You had time to go and do whatever it was you had to do. But anyway, lunch was at, I'm going to say 12 o'clock. And you, we were in the dining, if you didn't come to the dining hall to get your lunch at the time that you were supposed to be there, like 12, not 12.15, not 12.20, something like that. We ate our meals on regular schedule. And the, if you, I just don't know what happened if you, didn't come to meal. I, I'm almost thinking somebody would think you'd be sick. When anywhere we didn't miss a lot of meals. And um, then in the evenings we had. Uh, I don't know if anybody else had chores to do or not, but anyway we had to study and do whatever we did. We only had time, we only went to the, we didn't have, at, at Morristown, we could go to the library, but you couldn't go to the library at Swift. At five or six or seven o'clock, whatever time we had to be in, we had to be in at that time. So, um, and our, each class had what we call our time off the campus. We could go to the movie, I guess if you were, high school you could go maybe once every two weeks if you were junior college you could go maybe 
twice a week. I don't think so. But anyway, that's the way our our our, our days were scheduled. But it was pretty much, uh, you know, work that things that we had to do that pertained to school. Uh, and uh, there's sometimes we had we did have time in the afternoon. We had a day that we went to shop in town to get our uh, washing powders and whatever and whatever, that kind of time off the campus. And because the other times you were in class, going to the library, doing uh, activities, you know, that were here. We had calling hour on uh, uh, Sundays from three to five, I think, or two to four. It, it, well, I'm, I'm gonna be real big and say we, <laughs> We had about three hours for calling our on Sunday. Oh, and we had uh, uh, we had to go to midweek prayer, prayer service. We had uh, did we have chapel when every day? We had a chap. There's somebody helping me out here because <laughs> I'm a, I, I'm not 90, but I'm getting close to it. And this has been a while ago. But we had we had fun. I, I you know, we, we I mean, because there's lots of you can find lots of swift couples, and my husband and I were one. And I I met him. <laughs> I guess that was might have been the highlight of. <laughs> but anyway, I met him at Swift that one year that I was here, and I went. To, and I stayed and finished uh, two years, and I taught one year, and we were married the next year. So, uh, and there are many Swift couples. I mean, you can just, my, my brother uh, taught school, and he married one of his students. So, uh, there was, there was, I can convince you that there, there was recreation somewhere. <laughs> 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 You wouldn't believe this now, but I, I really did not do a lot of adjoining when I, because um, I, I love to sing, but I was not in the choir. I was not in the, I, I was in the dramatic club in high school. But just that one year here, I didn't, uh, um, I, I don't think I was that outstanding in anything. I am seeing the legacy of Swift, um, uh, day by day, almost. I'm a little uh, in awe of it uh, because I only attended one year here, at one year here, and I have um, seen uh, so many of the people who attended SWIFT uh, who, I mean, just have done many wonderful things and not being personal. My brother Ernest McKinney, who was here, that I keep talking about, um, he was the first black mayor of Jones Jonesboro. I mean, his son was the first black mayor of Jones Jonesboro. He was the first alderman. He was uh, elected alderman on the day that Martin Luther King was shot, and they are now naming a building for him in in Jonesboro. And there's this, I mean, just like this building here that children will be able to come uh, here and tour and, you know, the museum and visit and see all these kinds of things. And I don't know, everybody brings something almost every year of, you know, their, their compliments. So I don't think Swift's legacy will ever die.